Grok is coming to Tesla vehicles very soon, next week at the latest. Yeah, that's what every Tesla needs, racist AI. An AI that gave instructions on how to violate an ex-user. An AI so great that it praised the man with the mustache. I get Telegram partnering with Grok, but Microsoft. I have a deep feeling that this partnership could lead to some very awkward work experiences. Do we trust that this is the smartest AI in the world? Are we supposed to trust the AI created by the man who can't seem to throw hearts? This guy. Are we supposed to trust the AI created by the man who bought Twitter so he could influence elections? What will he influence with his AI? Remember when conversations about AI used to be all about the tech and their breakthroughs? Now we have to talk about how we have to protect ourselves from it. Hi, I'm Kina. It seems that 75% of you watching this are lurkers. There are so many things that we need to talk about. So subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure to comment to join in the conversation. Roberto, my husband, and I take time out every day to chat in the comments. And I'd love it if you joined in too. Also, I hit a YouTube milestone. I have an impersonator. This person copied my profile photo and made a similar handle name. Yes, I'm in the comments every day, but I will never ask you for anything apart from liking this video and subscribing. My break is over. I'll be back to my normal upload schedule Mondays and Thursdays. AI is making tough decisions, even life or death ones. These are decisions that used to be based on human knowledge and judgment. Now, it chooses who dies based on ones and zeros. So trustworthiness has to be a big word with AI, but what does it actually look like? AI has to be human centric. Developers have to build it using ethical principles, things like respecting people's fundamental rights and freedoms. It has to be transparent and be able to explain its decisions. Also, it has to be safe and fair. These ideas aren't options. Without these ideas, we'd never be able to trust it. The Stanford AI Index did a survey. They found that 61% of Americans fear self-driving cars. Only 13% of Americans trust them. That's a huge level of distrust. Distrust that ties back to transparency. I mean, lack of transparency. Public perception drives the rate of adoption. The black box issue is a major block. It's when you can't see how things work. It's mostly impossible to trace why an AI made a certain decision. And that's the problem, explainability. To have confidence in AI, we have to be able to understand and articulate the why behind its decisions. It's not just the AI's actions, it's the data that it learns from. The data is often biased or incomplete, which leads to biased and unfair decisions. It might favor certain groups. It may discriminate against others unintentionally or deliberately. It could stem from flawed data collection. It could be because of unequal ground truth, the accurate, verified, and reliable data used to train, test, and validate models. But detecting and fixing that bias, that's a massive challenge for developers. So this need for trust flows right into safety. We see AI incidents rising. The problem is that there's a lack of standard AI evaluations, especially among the big companies in the industry. Companies are doing safety techs, but they're keeping them in house. They're proprietary. That makes it incredibly difficult to compare models across the industry. It makes it even more difficult to properly verify their safety claims. So testing happens, but it's not open. It's not verifiable. It's fragmented. It creates a trust gap, not only for the public, but for the regulators as well. External evaluators like Apollo Research and METR, they can't even test everything. They can only access certain models. Their findings aren't always widely accepted or even validated by the whole AI community. All this leads to misalignment. Efforts are being made, sure, but those efforts, they lack depth. They lack standardization and external checks. What we have is not enough to be considered real, comprehensive safety assurance. There's misinformation too. It's not just tech failures, it's undermining truth itself. It's brought about the liar's dividend where deep fake tech gets so good that someone can just deny real evidence of video and audio recording by claiming it's fake. This is a huge present danger. It erodes trust in everything. We've already seen this happen using AI voices, personal data, pure disinformation, violating privacy. Remember the fake Joe Biden robocall targeting Democrats in New Hampshire? It is the New Hampshire presidential preference primary. Republicans have been trying to push nonpartisan and Democratic voters to participate in their primary. 
What a bunch of malarkey. We know the value of voting Democratic when our votes count. It's important that you save your vote in the November election. We'll need your help in electing Democrats up and down the ticket. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump again. Your vote makes a difference in November, not this Tuesday. If you would like to be removed from future calls, please press 2 now. In Mexico, there was an AI-generated image of a Starbucks cup backing a specific candidate, which Starbucks had to publicly deny. Then there was that spamouflage campaign. Using AI-generated images on platforms like X, they spread misinformation before the 2024 U.S. elections. It fueled polarization. It's really disturbing. France is investigating Twitter for foreign interference. It makes you stop and think about how we can protect democracy. How do we protect individual rights when AI can just pump out convincing lies or be used for surveillance for invigilation? These are serious concerns about AI tracking people via face recognition. It's biometric data that chips away at our privacy, our dignity. It feels like a clash of values sometimes, freedom versus the police state. Some of us realize that we haven't ever really been free. The European approach stresses the difference between their values and systems like China's social scoring. The idea is a scoring system would threaten individual freedom, privacy, and autonomy. It feels like AI is creating these gaps in responsibility. Who is liable when an autonomous system causes damage? Legal ideas about intent may not always apply. What about creations by AI? Who owns the copyright? The EU's approach to AI is human-centric. It favors people. And AI isn't seen as an author or an inventor. It's beyond time for legally binding rules. History isn't kind to situations where states let private companies set their own standards, especially in tech. There is so much happening around the world right now, and this is a big opportunity that needs attention. Last year, we saw a surge in global cooperation on AI governance. The OECD, the EU, the UN, the African Union, they all put out frameworks. They focused on transparency, trustworthiness, uh, the responsible AI principles. The UN General Assembly adopted a US-led resolution. It promotes safe, secure, and trustworthy AI that urges compliance with human rights law. Under different administrations, the U.S. has flagged regulation, fairness, safety liability. In 2023, policymakers showed strong support. Almost 74% agreed AI needs regulation, but they haven't done much about it. The EU's framing is three pillars. Boost AI use, prepare for societal change, ensure a solid ethical and legal framework. It's actually ethics by design. Build it in from the start. Embed the ethical and legal rules right from the beginning of development. There are tools to help protect people and society. Things like regulatory sandboxes. Sandboxes are a safe place to experiment. They're controlled environments to test AI applications. Figure out specific regulatory needs without stifling development. Foster innovation within clear guardrails. Guardrails based on fundamental rights and ethical standards. Should AI itself have some kind of legal personality? Should it be directly liable? Kind of like an electronic personhood. Don't look at me like that. The European Parliament considered it in 2017 for autonomous robots causing damage. The experts argue that we don't need a drastic step. They believe that harm can still be traced back to natural people or legal entities, the developer, the operator. The responsibility stays with the humans behind the machine. It leans towards developers being liable for defects, even ones that show up later. There are talks about mandatory liability insurance to cover potential damages, possibly making it easier for victims to prove their case, even reversing the burden of proof if the tech doesn't have adequate logging or transparency, which is especially relevant for things like self-driving cars. Ethical guidelines there are already shifting accountability more towards manufacturers and operators rather than just pinning it on the owner if something goes wrong with the autonomous system. Who owns articles, arts, inventions created by AI under current EU law, which is very human focused and AI generally can't be an author or an inventor. And that's because it lacks human originality. Patent offices generally need human inventors to be named, even though the European Parliament wants to find ways to protect AI creations. The ownership may default to 
the humans guiding the AI. The human who prepares, directs, and publishes the work would likely hold the rights. AI is hungry for data. It needs tons of it for training. That's in conflict with general data protection regulation rules, GDPR. Developers have to stick to its principles. Fairness no discrimination. Limiting data use to specific purposes, only collecting what's necessary. It's hard for them though, when they're busy trying to move fast and break things. They need to justify the type and amount of data they use. It has to be a meaningful way, not just an exercise in ticking a box on a list. The black box problem makes that harder. The lack of transparency in some AI systems makes it difficult to check if rules like those preventing bias are actually being followed, which is part of GDPR's fairness principle. The overarching goal is building a trustworthy AI ecosystem, one that empowers people, respects rights. It enhances ability, not just replaces them. Finance needs risk management for AI. Healthcare needs strict safety and quality standards for AI medical devices. Then there are lethal autonomous weapon systems, systems that could potentially make autonomous decisions to kill. These wouldn't align with international humanitarian law. There are calls to ban them. The European Parliament called for a binding international treaty, one to prohibit lethal autonomous weapons systems, especially those without meaningful human control over critical functions, things like target selection and attack. For me, AI isn't just another tech development. It's forcing us to re-examine our legal systems and our ethical codes. We have billionaires running wild, moving fast, and we don't want to be what gets broken. We can't escape it, but we definitely have to put a leash on it. In some cases, we may want to consider muzzling it. Regardless, it's a critical moment for global cooperation. The choices we make right now will have long lasting effects. AI models are getting smarter, cheaper, faster. We're pushing them towards harder and harder problems. How much of what makes us human, our intuition, our judgment, our decision-making, are we willing to hand over? All for the price of convenience. You guys, I think this is the position I should sit in for these videos. I think I figured out the light, the light reflection in the glasses with this position. Anyway, tell me if you agree. If you want to see the old reflection to compare, watch this. Check out my other channel, Asta Rico. It's right here. Subscribe here if you haven't. Um, and it was a pleasure chatting with you today. Okay, bye.